Okay, for some, I mean, this looks a little bit better, but. So next I'm gonna take this here and sort of dump it first. <gasps> There's that necklace! Oh my God, I have been looking for this necklace for a year. Oh my goodness, you, wow. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're talking handbag storage. Uh, this video was highly, highly requested for a very long time and I'm finally just now getting around to it. Um, so as you may know, I work in the pre-loved industry so I actually deal with handbags on the resale market. On my channel, I give you tips and tricks and insights into the pre-loved industry, into how to care for your bags and into shopping tips. So today, we're gonna focus on how to care for your bags long term, how I store my bags, how to maximize longevity and keep your bags in great condition when they're not sit technically sitting on your shoulder. So this video was very, very highly requested um, and I love taking your requests. If you ever have anything that you want to ask me about handbags or about shopping or about the pre-loved market or about how to save money, etc., um, please do not hesitate to leave me a video suggestion in the comments below. You can send me an email if you prefer to do it privately or you can message me on Instagram. I'll leave all of those things linked down below in the description box. So yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. I'd love to hear from you. So my first tip is to find shelving that has a lot of space between the shelves, prefer preferably something that's adjustable, and if, um, but if it's not adjustable, at least something that has a lot of space between the shelves. Um, this bookcase, for example, purchased it on Gilt, but this style is available from a couple of different companies, and I'll try to have it linked down below. I love it. I think that it looks great, and it's perfect for... for um, my purposes in my house. These shelves me measure approximately 17 inches apart and my tallest two handbags are the Givenchy Antigona Shopper Tote, which is a humongous, huge, huge bag. And the second tallest one is the Balenciaga Ladis. That one, as you can see, the handle goes straight up so that makes the height of the bag that much taller. What's really important is to make sure that your bags and your handles are standing up as best as possible, especially if they're stationary the way the Balenciaga is. Um, what you don't want to do is have it crushed in any way, and you especially don't want to leave it like that for any extended period, period of time. Um, that's how you get warping and sagging and just creasing and bending to your handles, and over time that can really damage it and really like uh, take away from the value of your bags in the long term. So the first thing you really want to make sure that you're doing is making sure that they are able to stand on their own. A lot of people like to use the IKEA cube storage. Um, those are generally about 13 inches high, which is great for most bags. But as you can see, I do have a couple in my collection that are a bit bigger than that because I just love big bags. So maybe that's like a me thing. <laughs> those of you who like small bags, maybe the 13 inch will be fine. But since I prefer bigger ones, I need to have a nice big shelf. And this one is perfect. Again, I'll have it linked down below in the description bar. By the way, I'm a newbie to home decor and everything like that. This is the first time I've ever designed an apartment or designed a designed and furnished a space myself, like with intention. Uh, this shelf, in case you guys don't know, and again, pardon me for my lack of knowledge, but I didn't know this. Maybe you, some of you out there don't know it as well. This type of shelf is called an etagere shelf. And it is a piece of furniture with a number of open shelves for displaying ornaments. And that is exactly what I use the shelf for displaying my ornaments, my handbags. So number two is to make sure that your bags are stuffed properly. Uh, for one, I think just this just looks good. Um, I do use this corner as like sort of a display for my handbag. So a part of it is aesthetic. Um, I like the way that a stuffed bag looks as opposed to like an, an unstuffed bag. I don't want it to look all like squishy, especially when I'm kind of like displaying them as decoration. The first thing that I do is I use air paper to stuff it fully. Uh, so this is the Givenchy Antigona Shopper. I have this bag stuffed with air paper. This is air paper that I just get from Amazon packages. I shop a lot online and as I imagine many of you do as well. And instead of purchasing because you can purchase air paper from Amazon, but I just instead opt to get it out of the packages that I get, so it's free. <laughs> a couple things you don't wanna do is you don't wanna use like towels or t-shirts or any type of fabric um, because it could hold some t it could hold moisture in that is not something you wanna do. And in larger or slouchier bags, I like to use um, squ uh, little squares of cardboard that I get from these Amazon boxes. I just cut them into the shape and size that I require for whatever bag it is and I use that to shape the inside of the bag as well as any air paper or anything that I also need. I also have 
a purse organizer that I have from Original Club. I'll leave this link down below. You guys know that I just love structure. I adore structure. I love purse, purse organizers in general, but they are great as well for stuffing because they will maintain the shape and structure of the bag while you're storing it. So this one I use for the actual organization purposes. So it has lots of pockets and compartments and everything like that, but you can, um, I'm pretty sure buy them without pockets and things like that. Um, I will leave this link down below. I got this off of Etsy. By the way, a note about not stuffing bags. If not for that organizer and if not for the air paper, this is what this bag doesn't have any type of structure at all. You don't want to leave any of your bags, especially canvas ones, and I'm probably even going to venture to say leather as well. You don't want to leave them unstuffed and looking like this for any extended period of time. You could accidentally put something on top of it and it could end up just completely smushing the bag. You could, like, if you see these creases here, your bag's susceptible to cracking and creasing and just things that you don't want. And it also, also, you know, it just looks better on the shelf. So the next thing you wanna do is clean out your bags before you return them to your shelf. I have this bin right here that I keep in my entryway and this is where I keep all the things that go inside of my purse on a regular day. I have my wallet here, sunglass case, mini pochette. When I get home every day, I take all the items out of my bags and put them into here and that's where I keep all of my purse contents. So it's nice and tidy and nice and uh, convenient for when I'm leaving the house. Next thing that I'll do is I'll just make sure to inspect it, make sure I don't have, make sure that there aren't any like, you know, candies or anything lying around inside of the bag. Generally speaking, I don't put candy and stuff inside of my bags. I have a video where I discuss what not to do with your bags that I will leave linked down below in the description box. To make sure there's, there's no like gum wrappers, candies, anything that could melt or stain, no pens, never pens. So that's what I do on a reg on pretty much a daily basis. And then every couple of months, what I will go through with my this little vacuum. Uh, I bought this a couple of months ago when I moved into my place. I adore it. So this is just a little handheld vac, not handheld, it's a, a little um, ah, rechargeable little vacuum sweeper thing. Um, I bought this on Amazon. Again, everything will be linked down below. It is a, you know, a floor vacuum, but this little piece here comes out and it doubles as a dust buster. Um, I love this thing. I'm not really a person who likes to clean, but this makes it super easy. I'll use this to vacuum out the inside of my bags every couple of months whenever I see that I need it. Okay, so I changed my uh, setup really quickly just to show you how I go through the inside of this bag with my little dust buster. So we are getting like all in my like mix here. It's my comp cards. Um, this is what the inside looks like beforehand. I just wanna make sure I get everything out of here. Since this is the bag that I carry the most, it's most likely to have just random. So now we're gonna go in with our little dust buster. It looks like there may be some like pet hair residue or something in, in here. I do this all the time at work when I clean out the inside of bags. I'm just gonna take some just like that. Side. I'm gonna wrap it around my hand just like this. Now I'm just gonna go through. Another thing, you guys know how about bag organizers that I love, all the dirt and dust and lint and whatever that gets inside of here does not end up inside of the bag itself. This bag ends up being a lot cleaner on the interior because I have a lining on the inside of it. For example, if God forbid anything were to spill or stain, it would probably go in here instead and I most likely would be able to machine wash this but I will, I am not entirely sure about that, it, but it is something that I feel like it is, since it, since it is removable, um, you would be able to launder it separately instead of having to actually clean your designer bag, which I've heard some people put 
their Louis Vuitton Neverfulls in the washing machine and I'm not that brave. <laughs> not. Okay, so the next thing that to make sure that you do when you're storing your bags is make sure that they are not touching one another. This especially, especially goes for patent leather, especially in a light color because of color transfer. Patent leather has the tendency of absorbing ink and dye from any surface that it touches. So make sure that your bags are not touching anything. So my next tip for handbag storage is silica gel packets. I've been assembling furniture in my, in my place since for the last six months or so. I think my last big furniture piece I've installed, I think I'm done with furniture for the time being, but I had it all delivered to me and it all, and a lot of it came with these silica packs. I know it says to throw these away and do not eat them. Uh, definitely don't eat them and keep them away from small children and pets. Uh, that goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> the next thing that you wanna do is uh, tuck your strap inside of your bags, especially if the straps are detachable. Um, instead of just hanging them off the bag, unless it's one that you reach for very often, to keep them tucked away inside of the bags. Make sure that the dangling accessories are held inside of the bag as well. The other thing you wanna take into account is if, especially if you're not using, if you're not storing your bags inside of your dust bags, um, I have seen things like clochettes and bag charms and luggage tags hanging on the outside of the bag cause sunspots to happen. If over time you have like a very delicate, very delicate material, it does some sun bleaching. If you have the clochette on the, um, hanging off the outside of it, then that's going to be like a barrier to the sun bleach. That's something that can happen over time if you leave any type of accessories dangling from your bags and your bag gets any type of sun bleaching. I guess, I guess think of it like a tan line. <laughs> or a reverse tan line. <laughs> I've seen this happen on ostrich before, so if you have anything ostrich, be very careful. Once again, I do not store my bags inside of the dust bags, but if I did have a piece that was ostrich, then I would care put it inside of the bags. Uh, so the next thing that I like to do is keep all of my receipts and paperwork, serial cards, uh, stored together in a Ziploc and keep them in a special place. Now, I shop pre-loved, so I generally don't have receipts for my bags generally don't have them, but I do think it is just a good uh, good practice to have. If you have any cereal cards, sometimes depending on what the card is made of, I'll keep it and store it inside of the bag um, for like a Chanel, for example. It, um, when it does come time to sell your bags, it makes it a lot easier. I've seen some people in the past, you know, keep their, all of their cereal cards together and when they go to, and then when they come in to sell a bag with me, they end up bringing the wrong card for the wrong bag. And it's just really confusing. So I like to keep all of the included accessories uh, together and labeled so it's nice and organized. Again, this comes from me being a terribly messy, unorganized person. So again, extra effort is always something that I <laughs> encourage. Uh, the other thing with receipts is that they can sun bleach over time, so I would try to keep them inside of the sleeve that you get from the designer if possible, as well as keep them inside, uh, as well as not put them inside of a box that gets any UV rays, so no clear shoe boxes. I like to just use regular boxes. I have a box back here, um, a designer box back here where I keep everything. I'm not going to grab it right now because it's kind of like tucked away, but it's just a regular cardboard box from a designer, and that's where I keep all of my stuff just to avoid sun bleaching so the receipt stays legible for longer. Um, I do think though that, you know, if the, after like 10 years, yeah, a receipt's probably gonna bleach out a little bit and maybe harder to read, but uh, the, the more you can prolong that, the better. So I store my dust bags inside of the bags themselves when I'm not using them, but when I do go to use the bag, I obviously take out the dust bag and I like to just label them really simply. I have this, I'm gonna have to replace it probably now, but especially because this, is a spare dust bag that I use for a Tom Ford bag. This obviously is Louis Vuitton, but I just like to label them with uh, tape and a Sharpie. Um, this says Tom Ford Jennifer on it. I pretty much only use my dust bags when I travel, but it is good to know what dust bag goes to which bag. When I do go to use a bag, I will fold it and put it right here on the shelf where the bag goes. And let's say for example, I was in a rush and switched between two different bags eventually over the course of a week because once again messy scattered person you know i'll have a pile of dust bags and who goes where and whatever um so i just like to make sure that the ones that i use for specific purposes especially when they are not the original designer dust bag i know what goes where and which one fits 
saves me a lot of time and a lot of energy. Next, we're gonna talk about whether or not to leave bags hanging. Um, there are certain bags that I will leave hanging here on this mannequin. Um, one of them specifically is this one right here. This is my vintage St. Cloud. Um, once again, I did remove the original strap of this and use, and I now use a detachable canvas one. So my general rule with whether or not I will leave a bag hanging over a specific amount of time is, number one, how big is the bag? Generally, I'll make sure that it's smaller bags that I leave hanging because it follows that a smaller bag is going to be less, less heavy um, because there are less materials than a larger one. And second of all, it's going to be the overall construction of the bag. So I want to make sure if I leave a bag hanging that any weight um, isn't going to decrease the top of the bag. Um, I'm thinking specifically of like the Chanel Boy bag, for example. If I can find a picture, I will try my best to add one, sort of what I'm talking about. Some bags, when you do go to carry them um, from the strap, uh, you'll get a dent in like the bottom or the top of the bag. That's not something I generally tend to like. <laughs> this bag is great because with the amount of structure and the relative light weight of it, um, there's no creasing, no gaping, um, none of that when it goes to hang. So generally speaking, I will hang it there from the mannequin. But once again, make sure you make sure that you're not doing this on anything that is larger, made from a softer leather, because over time, once again, you want you want to avoid um, any excessive creasing or stress on uh, pressure points of, of your handbags. Now we're going to talk about to dust bag or not to dust bag. Which do you prefer? I've mentioned it a few times. You can see it behind me. Um, I store my bags outside of their dust bag. Um, I will do an apartment tour soon, be on the lookout for that, but I leave mine out, I have giant windows where the sun does come into the room, and I generally will leave my windows actually open to, to receive the fresh air. I live in a very humid climate, and these are all things that if I were talking to a friend and giving them advice like I'm doing now, I would say not to do these things, but ultimately I really, I want to live my life and I hate using my air conditioner. It has to work for my lifestyle, otherwise it's not right for me, so I do what's right, what's right for me and I kind of am throwing a bit of caution to the wind. However, dust bags are going to protect from, well, dust, duh. Well, from UV lights, uh, the sun bleaching or the reverse tan lines like I talked about earlier, especially if it's a darker dust bag. Uh, so if you happen to not have the original designer dust bag, um, I do recommend like a pillowcase, especially in darker colors and thicker materials. You don't want anything too thin because if the sun goes right through it, then you're kind of not doing anything. So bear that in mind. So generally using a dust bag isn't a bad idea. Now I'm going to give you my reasons why I don't use my dust bags, and if this works for your lifestyle, then let me know. P.S. Side note, I want to know, do you guys store your bags inside of your dust bags? Comment down below, are you dust bag or no dust bag? This is one of the very few ways that I live dangerously with my bags, and yeah. <laughs> so now, the reason I don't use my dust bags, I have a couple. The first one is that I like to see the bags. I sort of have this wall, like this little corner area of my apartment. This is like my collection, you know? I like, this is like decoration for me as well as function, as well as decoration for this area of my apartment. I really like that I just wake up and I see all of my beautiful handbags and my beautiful shoes and everything displayed nicely. And um, if they were inside of their dust bags, it just wouldn't be as visually appealing. There's the aesthetics, there's the vanity, uh, there's that. But another thing is that when you are storing things for an extended amount of time and not using them, I do like to be able to see the bag itself. Um, what you wanna make sure, for example, is that anything isn't resting to, like, for example, like if a bag is stored inside of the dust bag, it follows that you can't see the bag itself. Um, if it's resting on the wrong, if, if the, the chain, for example, is resting on the wrong part of the bag and is gonna leave like a long-term like indentation or wrinkle or stain potentially, um, there's no way to know, know that unless you can actually see it. So when I can see my bags um, sitting nicely and cutely on their shelf, um, I can see like what's happening with it. Sunlight to me is the best disinfectant <laughs> with that kind of stuff. So I just don't like them hidden away 
yeah, I don't like them hidden away because I kind of just want to see what they're up to over time. The other reason that I like to keep my bags out is because this is my dressing corner and when I'm getting dressed in the morning or at night, for example, to go on a night out, um, I like to be able to look at my bag and see which one goes with the outfit. If they're all stored away in a dust bag, you're not gonna, it's gonna be that much more difficult to like coordinate your outfit to your bag unless you're just great at it and you know everything that you have. Um, me, I like it for a little bit of hashtag inspo when I'm uh, getting dressed for the day. So, and this last point is for larger collections. Seeing what you actually have is really important. Often I have clients come in and they have, they bought the same bag twice, like I've literally seen that happen, or too many bags that are too similar. So if you, every morning when you wake up, look through your, like you see your collection of 14 or 20 or 50 or 100 handbags, then you might have a better general sense of what you already have in your collection. If everything is packed away in dust bags, you may kind of forget things that you don't rotate in a lot. And what I have seen happen as well is you end up buying things redundantly. Um, and you'll have a lot of like the same type and style of bag. If I can see everything, then I have a better idea of what I have. Uh, side note, this has nothing to do with storage, but I also keep a photo album in my phone of every handbag in my collection, so I do that too. And my last tip for handbag storage is to actually use them. All these tips that I gave you for storage, to me, would be kind of useless if you're not actually using them. So use your bags. Um, my philosophy always is use things and love people. Um, I'm not trying to have, I don't want my closet to be a handbag mausoleum. Um, it's really good to rotate your bags. Um, if you use the same bag too much, then over time it is going to get worn much quick, much more quickly than, than it should. Um, for me, the number of bags that I have in my collection will not exceed what I actually use. That's just my general rule. I don't want to have, I've, I've said this before, but I don't want to have a collection of like 500 handbags. That's not, that's not me. Unless, unless I really am rotating. And I just don't know how that would be feasible, but whatever. Yeah, handbags are supposed to be fun. And the fun part is getting to use it. Impressing people isn't the fun part. Carrying your bag is the fun part. At least that's what I think. Let me know if you guys agree. <laughs> Oh